Hello, thank you for the warm welcome. And today we will have some fun with uh, a 30 years old language and React, because we all love React, right? So I'm Eduardo, I'm a senior dev at Storyblock. Storyblock is a headless CMS, and it's so beautiful that I don't even have to talk about it. We will talk about server components, and I want you to focus on this word. Server components run exclusively on the server. You may say, Edo, yeah, it's, we all know about that. We all know that server components run on the server, yeah. I work on open source SDKs, React SDKs, and Next.js SDKs, and I see the issues, and I see the many of us don't really understand how server components work, React server components work. So I want you to focus on this word, and I will take you to a journey through time, and we will start with episode one first, PHP Menace. And you remember maybe 30 years ago, this was the web. Some of you were there, some of you were not even born. But this was the web back in the time. And this guy, Rasmus Lerdorf, came up with a clever solution, a scripting language to have dynamic web pages, loading data from somewhere, composing pages into something dynamic, right? And PHP was born. It was called personal home page back then. Now, after three completely rewritten of the core, and uh, now PHP means something completely different, and no one knows the, the meaning of PHP. But now we have uh, PHP that works exactly like that. So we, the client, we make a request to the server. The server knows that the request has to be routed to an index.php or something like that. The index.php must be run by an interpreter. The interpreter has some access to the DBMS API, the POSIX API, some external API. And then the interpreter, the purpose of the script was to generate, is to generate an HTML file. The file then comes back to the server and to the client. This is the whole round trip, right? And the simple PHP component is exactly that. So we start from the top, we connect to a MySQL database, for example. We get some data, and then we have a template, we render data. So this script executes only once. Uh, it never re-renders, and the value that we render here is sent back to the client and never changes. Okay, so now we go into the next episode and the next hope. So, when the PHP Empire ruled, the problem was that when you made a request from the client, you had to wait until the whole processing on the server completed, right? So, we came up with a clever solution. We move the rendering thing on the client. So, the process is quite similar. Still, we have a request to the server. The server sent something to the backend and came up with an HTML and JS. But the JS now is rendered on the client, so all the rendering process happens at the client level. So we solve something, but still we have to make some calls back to the server to get some data, fetch something. So some problems, right? But PHP popularity began to decline, and in 2013, something big happened, and I guess you know what. So Facebook Meta, Facebook back then created React, and you may think that they love, they love JS very much, right? But if I tell you that actually they, their whole infrastructure, their whole backend, their whole software was based on PHP, and still much of it is. So React and JSX was born after their hard work on PHP. They actually came up with a subset, no, a superset of PHP called XHP, which is this thing with, where you basically have uh, XML fragments into PHP code. This is XHP, this is also the GitHub repo for this thing. And you may recognize something here. Yes, you are correct. So basically, PHP, okay. Now, after that, you know that we have something new. We have the isomorphic JavaScript, universal JavaScript, whatever. So the server-side rendering, another pattern. So now we start from a request to the server. The server sends something to the node backend or, or whatever. We have a shell rendered. So we have some HTML and JS. So we have the first content full paint in the client, but then we need the data. So we need to request data. Uh, so we have another round trip. It's called hydration. So we go back to the, to the server. The server again goes back to the node backend. Node backend fetches some content from a DBMS, POSIX, or a headless CMS as beautiful as Storyblock. And then we have the content render. We send the content back to the server, then the client, and this is the largest content full paint, right? So finally, we have PHP strikes back. Why? Because we have many problems with server-side rendering. You know, 
uh, requires hydration. We have the bundle, which is massive. We have complexity. The SEO is difficult. State management is a mess. So React Server Components. Finally, I have two minutes to introduce you to React Server Components, but I will be very quick. So React Server Components, basically you make a request to the server. The server requests something to an index.js processed by Node. Node requests some content from the backend, DBMS, a wonderful header CMS, and then renders an HTML. HTML gets sent back to the server, and then back to the client. There can be some client-side rendering on top of that made by probably React. Now, this is a simple React server component, right? We start from the top. So we get some data from the DB, MySQL, for example. When we fetch some data, when we have a template, we render that trending products, right? And this executes once every request. It never re-renders, and the rendered value is sent back to the client and never changes. Mm, I remember something similar, right? Yeah, you are correct, and also Leia approves. So. My message for you today is don't believe the, the hype. So uh, every new trend, everything is just hype. So I want you to study patterns, to focus on patterns, because if you really understand patterns, you can easily uh, move from a framework to a new one, from a uh, pattern to a new one. You, you get to understand the basics, right? And that's it for you today. Thank you very much. You can find me online and on the booth upstairs. Thank you.